Thank you everyone for joining tonight. So like you, you've, you've come a, obviously a, a long way in a short time with that relationship. Um, it's also important to communicate when you're tired. You see, sometimes we, we think it's a noble thing to hold back and not share that with them. But it's your truth. And in sharing that truth, it doesn't matter how they receive it. You think you're protecting them, but it's important for your truth to be there as well. Do you see? That's part of the service. Do you see? Some, then you're, you're going to be feeling much more aligned and attuned with the presence. Do you see? If you keep that little part back in the shadows, you're only there like 80%, you see? So it's a, it's a fine balance. But, but it's the next step. So the idea in these things is to, you come here and you maybe have some practices and you open up, but that's the easy part. You gotta act on the things. You see, you can drill these things in your head 20 different times, but you got to experience it. You see, that's what realize means, is to make it real. And in your own different ways, do you see? You can say a lot that, hey, I have these things and I want to respond differently, but make sure you have a plan in place. How are you going to respond? So that way, when things come up, you start responding. You see, you act on it. Because you got to build in these new habits if you want to make those tough changes. For most people, when you're dealing with the personal stuff, we talk about reflection and not absorption. But what most people do when they reflect, they absorb. They own it, they give it lots of consciousness, and they make it even realer, right? The idea is to not give so much coloration to your past. Because what you're doing is you're keeping it inflamed and you're breathing life into it with all that color. Because you still think it's you. You believe those stories to be defining you. And as long as you believe that to be true, that will be the case. The past is just a collection of experiences that you consciously attune to. That's all. They're not you. When you die, you'll realize that. Because you'll wake up at some point in another life and you won't remember those few experiences. There's a reason you're given the gift of forgetting. But you can choose to be reborn every second. And it's as simple as you say it is, because you're in charge. It could take 10 years of therapy, or it can be done like that. But you got to believe and have faith. The other thing you can do is start, instead of talking about all your triggers, start talk, talking about your glimmers. We've talked about this at the end of the last two meditations we got together. Start giving that stuff consciousness. Do you see? It's hard at first, right? Because it's not as familiar. And so Jacob gave us an example of coming in and he was starting to feel kind of good, but he didn't know how to explain it. Do you see? It's a whole new world when you start deciding to talk about the things that fulfill you. For some reason, for us, it feels uncomfortable. So for who would like to try it? Anybody? You see, 
Think about it for a second when you have something that's triggering you. You have a whole backstory to it and you can tell all kinds of things about it or where it came from and all these things. But try doing it to something that fulfills you or makes you feel good. Talk about that. Give a little bit of life to that story. I did that and I felt energized. So you can build stories around these things. And sometimes let the stories go beyond the facts. And you don't have to try to interpret the stories. Because when you do, you separate from it some. When you're trying to understand with this thinking mind, just start to tell the story and give it some life and notice the feeling inside of you. Do you see? And then let the sacred mystery just be there. Give it space. Do you see? See, we kind of, part of this we call a, a healing circle. It's really about just opening up the heart. But most of the times when people open a heart, they tend to stay on the denser side and talk about the things that they think are broken or need to be fixed or what's going wrong. But you can talk about the light, the things that fulfill you and start to give that coloration. And what's going to do is as you do that, you're going to become more and more in the present moment. Instead of living in the past and having the past interpret your present moment. Do you see? And the better you get at attuning to the present moment without trying to control the future, the future will start coming in and start revealing things to you. That's the spirits. You're making space for it by not being so dense. You start getting more into the subtle energies. And as you start to get more and more into the subtle energies, most likely you're not going to be able to put it into words or to fully understand it. And the better you can get at being all right with that, the more, oddly enough, clarity will come because you're not trying to control it. You're giving space for it to teach you. Do you see? Because if you try interpreting, most of the time you're going to interpret it with what? Your past experiences. And now all of a sudden you're in the past again, trying to put that on to the future. Do you see? So it's really subtle in how it works. Do you see? But this is more aligned with what meditation is, right? Meditation, as I would explain it, is a relationship. It's not a practice. It's a relationship with yourself. It's a relationship with your experiences. And then it's a relationship with other relations. You see? But most people get slowed down by meditation because they've stopped at the personal development side. You see, because there's all kinds of epiphanies that happen through meditation. But true meditation, the thing that you kind of are aiming for is to be kind of of service to humanity. But service is not how most people look at it. It's not really so much something that you do because you're caught up in the facts. Service is really coming into soul control. So we talk sometimes about the difference between negativity and positivity. That's not an emotion. Negativity is where you're into the form side of life and positivity is when you start to see things from a broader perspective of the soul instead of the individual perspective only. You see? It's the same thing with service to humanity. 
people get that really mixed up, like they need to change the world. But really, what you're trying to do with your service is impact your environment and the others that are attracted into your environment. And if you do that work in service, that's going to help transform humanity. Do you see? So for some people, that circle might be pretty tight knit. And it could just be with your family or it could just be with your couple people at your work, couple siblings. For other people, it might be more, a little bit more of a public eye. Either way is perfect. If you're helping to shift one other person in that relationship through what you do, that's enough. Do you see? And so that's what we're kind of shooting for. You start to become more and more self-aware between you as the individual and you as the soul. And then in your relationships of how you respond to the outside world. How can you lovingly accept what comes into your sphere of influence versus trying to control it? You see? And that's where you really can start to feel it. At first, it's great to celebrate how you're feeling it internally, how you're learning and growing and all those kinds of things. But if you're going to really get some strong inner development done, it has to be accompanied by service. Otherwise, you start focusing on yourself a little too much, and at some point it's going to become corrupting. And so that inclusivity, that generosity, and those kinds of things, harmlessness, are really important keynotes to have in your life. Because nothing, no thing will make you feel as fulfilled as helping others. In your own special way. And that starts by being true and authentic with who you are. Both your assets and your deficits. And being all right with that. Do you see? It's got to come off as natural. If it doesn't, you could be saying and acting a part all you want, but it's not going to truly resonate with your heart. And that's what speaks to people. Not your words. Not your actions. They all help, but it's got to be sincere from the heart. And that's why it's important not to just always be there as a steady influence, but sometimes to say, hey, I need a break. Hey, this is starting to burn me out. I just want to be honest. It doesn't mean I'm going to stop, but I want to be honest. You need to know who I am too, because we're both learning and growing together, you see? It's important to speak your truth. So that way, the things that are going on inside of you match the things that are going on outside of you. Aligning your thoughts with your words and your actions. And so what, what, as best as you can, what you want to do is try to, if you, if you have something facing like that, you try to go later on, not in the moment, if something is stirring you. Later on, you drop into your meditative state and you try to review it from the lens of the soul. In often cases, it could be both. Remember, it's, it's not necessarily about the answers. It's about how present you can be in the moment. Do you see? When we're seeking answers, we're back into the thoughts and we're separating. You, when you're 
so there's, let's see, how should we explain this? So there's different levels of, let's say, consciousness and also different levels of channeling, right? And so, let's see, you can be, At first, when someone, like the old school way of like, for instance, channeling would be trance channeling, where you are n no longer in your body at all. And you're just bringing some spirit through, right? And then later, adding in another way of connecting up with spirits, where you're doing, let's say, plant medicine. And within plant medicine, you're connecting to your emotional body, but it's really hard to bring that stuff back through and remember it in your brain consciousness, similar to the dreaming world, right? And then later what happens is, then you can start channeling, so there's starting to be a lot more channelers out there now who can actually be conscious of the stuff that's being said through them, right? There's all these differing stages at a certain point, it comes to where your soul takes a lot of the controls. And so, like for instance, for me, I'm not, I'm no longer that, I, growing up, I was very social and very, I never had a deep conversation in my life until I was 30. And now I don't want to have any anything other than deep conversations. They bore me. I'm not interested in it. Most things on the personal levels bore me. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm saying there's different levels to this. But if I tried to teach what I'm going through to most people on my personal journey, it wouldn't work for them because that's not where they're at. But I can tell you you don't want to lose the personality. The idea is you chose a personality to see things through certain lenses and to have certain experiences. There's a reason you chose that personality in this lifetime. So the idea is to be able to see stuff through that and honor it without destroying it, but also to be able to pull back and look at that thing because you're not that personality. That personality is just a lens to which the soul sees things through 360 degrees. The personality is seeing things through maybe just a couple degrees. And so as you're growing in experiences, you're learning how to see things from different angles and perspectives. But that's why for people, as they learn a lesson, they think, man, I thought I learned this lesson and now it's coming at, to me, at me from this angle and now from this angle. You see, because what you're doing is you're starting to see things from a broader and broader lens. People see it like, man, I'm circling back to this again. No, you're just actually improving your field of vision, your field of experience, you see? And so the idea is to celebrate them both. Do you see? Be all right with sometimes being selfish and just working on you. Be all right with making mistakes and stumbling. But the best you can get at staying humble, the better you are. And so when you make mistakes, don't let your pride come up and think, oh man, I need to fix that. Just say, okay, now there's an opportunity to learn. How do I take that and adjust without having to absorb it? Like, oh, that is me. That's just one little incident in a vast, vast ocean. But what we tend to do is really own that. If you really own it, smile at it and laugh at that for a while. And take note of how long you owned it for. Because maybe you owned it for two weeks and next time you'll only own it for a week. 
see you're making progress. And as long as you can look at these things and continue to make progress, great. Without making the excuses of what that thing is. You see, the, the, in other words, the, the thing that triggers you. You see? Uh, so it's play around with it, have fun. Don't take yourself seriously and continue to look at things from different angles. So we're going to do two meditations tonight. Both of the meditations tonight are pretty light. We're kind of taking in a little bit of the, the energies of this full moon that's passed. Going from the form side to the light side. So the first meditation is a pretty basic meditation. But what we're trying to do is get you to, to really tap into imagination a little bit. Visualization and embodying it. You see? So take a moment, close your eyes and connect in. Give yourself permission to be here in this time and space. Connect with the heart. Clear off, let go of anything that we were just discussing. Give yourself permission to play with this meditation. As we practice some visualization, imagination, and embodiment. If you're You're all sitting up. So I want you to all visualize without doing it that you're laying down. And as you're laying there without doing it physically in your mind's eye, see yourself sitting up and crossing your legs. See yourself bringing your hands to heart center without doing it. Visualize yourself sitting in an empty room. Right now there's just you in that room. Now imagine there's one more thing in this room. There's a ladder in front of you. The ladder has five steps on it. <coughs> See yourself going and standing in front of that ladder. So picture yourself getting up. going and standing in front of this ladder. What type of ladder is this? What is the ladder made of? What we're gonna do is we're gonna walk up and down that ladder in a moment, step by step. <coughs> so to start, place a hand on each side of the ladder. What does this ladder feel like against the surface of your palms? Now picture yourself putting your left foot up onto the first step of the ladder. And then step up, bringing your right foot up next to your left. Adjust your grip a little bit higher with each hand and then take your next step up. Go through this process until you've gone up all five steps of the ladder and then wait there at the top. Now 
Notice how you're feeling at the top of the ladder. Do you feel steady or nervous? Cold or warm? Anxious? Are you enjoying the view from the top of the ladder? Now we're going to reverse our steps back down the ladder one at a time. So now place one foot on the step below and then bring your other foot to meet it. Adjust your hands and take the next step down. Continue to do this as you descend slowly, step by step until you reach your feet back firmly on the ground. Now take a step back and look at the ladder again. But this time you're gonna extend it and give the ladder one more step. six steps instead of five. Walk up to the ladder, and as I call out the number, go through your process, one step at a time. Making sure to visualize each foot and each hand as you physically engage with each step. Step one. Step two, check the sturdiness of the ladder. Step three, four, getting higher and higher, five, Step six, notice how you're feeling, anything different with the ladder from the last time. Check in with yourself. Notice the color of the room. Notice the scent. What's the temperature? Back down, step five. Step four. Three. Two. One. Step back down to the ground. Step back away from the ladder again. Take a look around your room. How many walls? How many sides? How high is your ceiling? Before you step up to the ladder, extend it one more step. Now make that ladder seven steps. One. Two, three, four, <coughs> five. Make sure you have a nice grip on the ladder. Six, seven. At the top of the ladder, check in with yourself. How does it feel? Any differences? Back on down, six, five, 
four, three, two, one. Back to the ground, step back. Plop your butt down on the ground. Cross your legs. Feel into your body. How are you feeling right now, sitting there, with imagining, visualizing yourself versus at the beginning? How's your imagination coloring it? Visualize uncrossing your legs, bringing your hands to heart center, See if you can notice each finger individually touching. Now imagine that an animal has come into the room. Trust your intuition, whatever animal. Go up to the animal. What color is it? smell like? What does it want to share with you? Now watch as that animal climbs the ladder. When it gets to the top, it jumps off into the clouds and disappears. Plop back down again to your seated position. Feel yourself laying back melting into the room. Take a deep breath. And as you do, sit back up, bringing yourself back to this room. Take another deep breath in. Connect with the floor here, connect in with your body here, and when you're ready, open your eyes. So as you can see, this one was a pretty simple, basic meditation, playing around with a little bit of trusting your imagination but also allowing things to become real. Sometimes it's easier to start with something that you're more familiar with, to build it into your imagination, but allow it also to go into places where you're unfamiliar. 
allow it to come in ways that maybe in this physical realm doesn't seem realistic, but in that realm it can. I'll pass it around one more time just to see if anything came up for you in that meditation. <laughs> Thank you everyone for playing. The, see, if, if, at first, as you're building these things, it's a little bit easier as you're playing with your imagination than maybe to start with some stuff that you're familiar with. So like a ladder. <laughs> and what you'll naturally do at first is apply your history onto it. You know, going back to your middle school gym or to your bedroom or whatever a lot of times. And so give yourself room to go beyond that even. Do you see? The idea is imagination is the key to the universe. You can go anywhere in the universe by going inside of yourself. And so what you're trying to learn how to do with imagination is play and not limit it. In your imagination, are you really allergic to cats? In your imagination, are you really a klutz? Do you see what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be that way because that's not who you are. This is just a little experience that you checked into. But when you go out into the astral realm, you don't have to be allergic to cats. You see, you don't have to limit it. But we limit it with our thinking minds. And so we start trying to have all kinds of questions being answered. You see, play with it and allow it to come to life. And what will happen is you can go further and further and expand and get all kinds of neat insights and then build it back into you. Do you see? What I mean by that is, for instance, some messages might come to you through a scent or through a taste or through a visualization or through a hearing or through, it can come in your own way and that's your own symbology and that's fine because you're building it back in to your physical consciousness through your emotional consciousness, you see? And so you're learning how to build these bridges through these plays. But you can, the sky's the limit. Do you see? I debated on, instead of using an animal, I was gonna come bring in a word that none of you knew what the word meant. And so then you would've been really stumped and frustrated. But once you let go of that frustration, then what stands revealed? Do you see? It can be anything. And that's the part. But what you're trying to do at first, in this first one, is really allow your imagination to also connect in and be embodied. And in the next meditation, we're going to try to expand it out and go more into the subtleness, more from the form side into the light side. Okay? So as we get further into this and you're playing around with the light later in this meditation, this meditation is slightly longer. You gotta remember the power of the light as you work with it, right? So you have your light here and it meets someone else's light. And when they come together, it naturally grows, do you see? See how that works with the flame? Mm -hmm. That's what happens with your light too. When you start to attune to it and you start feeding it in whatever ways honors your fulfillments. Do you see? What are the things that help you, help your light shine? You know, for. Some of you, it might be studying certain things. For some of you, it might be music. For some of you, it might be isolation. For some of you, it might be social things. They're all great. And what I try to encourage you to do is focus on one thing that really feels aligned and also focus on one thing that really feels struggling. 
you see? Because you don't want to just always just stick with the easiest road. You also want to sometimes try to go into the conflict areas because if you're willing to go into the tension areas, that's where the real growth can happen. You see? If you want to do that kind of thing. Ready for the next meditation? Okay, first you gotta let go of your frustrations. Let go of your thoughts. For this one, if you wanna lay down, feel free to lay down, lay back. We're gonna play with some of the lights. I was gonna darken the room, but then I realized I don't wanna have to have a flashlight on the whole time. So everyone raise your hand for a second. Raise one of your hands. One of your hands, Lauren. (laughs) (laughs) And what I want you to do is do whatever your process is to try to connect in to your meditative flow. And when you're there, lower your hand down. Connect into your presence, the center of your being, the light within. Letting go of your thoughts, your distractions, the distortions, your perceived limitations, giving yourself permission to be here in this time and space. You're standing in the open space and in front of you, there's a sacred room. (coughs) Walk up and go into this sacred space. And as you go in, you notice there's many, many, many candles, unlit candles all around this room and there's a table in front of you with a box of matches pick up the box of matches take out a match and before you light it look around the room all the unlit candles and decide which one you're going to light. Strike the match, light it, and walk over to light that one candle. And after you do, notice how this one candle shifts the energy in the room. If you haven't already, blow out that match. Keep the box of matches in your hand. Look around the room and choose another of all the many unlit candles. Choose one. Walk over to it. Go through your same process. 
to light the candle. And then notice any differences in the room with the two lit candles. Feel the room, the sacredness come alive, both inside and out. Go through the steps one more time. Look around and choose a third candle. Walk over to it. Strike your match. Light the candle. And notice the three candles dancing. Notice the details of each candle. Become aware of the spirit in each flame. Take another step with these three candles. You're going to choose some way to reorganize these three lit candles so they can be set into a specific shape, maybe in front of you, maybe behind you, maybe around you. But choose the shape. Walk around, pick up each candle, put them into their new position. And then afterwards, sit with that energy. Notice any differences. Notice any similarities. Take a moment to check out all of the other candles in the room sitting there unlit. Use your intuition to decide on the total number of candles that you want to be lit in the shape you're going to re rearrange them into in a moment. But this time, instead of walking around to the individual candles and arranging them one by one, choose all the candles that you want, but use your mind to instantly place all of your candles into the shape you intended. And with all these unlit candles standing there, use your heart to instantly light all of these intended candles. Sit with this newly lit grouping created through your heart's desire. 
your mind's intent. Notice what it's like to sit with the light of your soul. Notice that the sacred space is a reflection of your internal world. And now we're going to make it a little bit more real. We're going to play with these candles in a whole new way. Picture a whole new room that you're walking into. But this room is filled with several other people. Maybe you know some of them, maybe you don't. They're all doing their own thing or maybe having some conversations, staying busy in their own ways. But look past their forms for a moment and notice that inside of each of them, they too have a candle. Each is lit to a varying degree. And then take a look at your candle inside of you and see what happens to that light when you feed it different thoughts and words. Notice what it does to your flame. Notice when you have doubt what your flame does. Or when you have hope. What does your flame do when you sit in judgment? Let's turn up that light a little bit by giving it some unconditional love. some acknowledgement and support. Allowing your candle to become brighter. And rather than just thinking unconditional love, what if you spoke the words, making it even more real? How authentically can you resonate? Now notice yourself walking around the room, focusing on nothing, no controls, not trying to awaken anybody, but just walking around with your loving light shining. See what it does to the other candles in the room. And now mix in 
a kind word or a smile. Notice how all of their lights start to burn a little brighter. How do you feel sharing your light? In your natural state of being, And lastly, call in the light of the sacred mystery, the unknown. Allow that light to come into the room and allow it to stay a mystery. Just allow your light and its light to merge, to dance. From this point of your loving light, now maybe look back on those things that triggered you, those things that used to get under your skin. Give them love. See how small they really are. See how powerful your light can be. It's not trying to control things. It's not trying to define things, explain things. Just it's beingness. Allowing the flame to come to life. as you walk through the day in and day out. And then begin to slowly bring yourselves back to the room, wiggling, adjusting, but trying to make the commitment that in this coming week, you're gonna look for the light, the light in others, sharing it from yourself. Remembering who you really are. Wiggle the toes, adjust the hips, blink the eyes and greet the world. The more you practice this, the goal isn't to 
necessarily spend more time in the spiritual world, but it's to see the spiritual world in your day-to-day -day encounters. Start seeing everything that comes your way as a blessing from that neutral standpoint of the light of the soul. We'll pass around the feather one more time before we close out the circle. Thanks. Thank you everyone for sharing, being part tonight. Remember that and anything you encounter in the physical and emotional realms, that's the form side. Behind that form side, there's a soul and there's a spirit. That form is just a symbol for a loving spirit. So anything that you encounter, remember at its core, has a loving spirit coming to help teach you a lesson. Right? And so shine that light on it when you're ready and allow it to come alive. If you try to control it or judge it, good or bad, you're really limiting its potential and thus your own potential. Take a moment to seal off your energy centers, clear your altar, just you in your own bubble, your own auric field. You can take either of those meditations and play with them a little bit in your own practice, seeing what might come up, seeing how long you can stay with it before you lose your physical consciousness and fall into your delta waves. See, that's what you're doing in a way is you're, you're going from these alpha beta states into like the theta and seeing how long you can stay in there before you fall into the delta. And in that theta state, you're learning how to be a, become a responsible co-creator in your worlds. Thank you everyone for playing tonight. Hope you found it worthwhile and hope you get home safely, drive safely and all that good stuff. You don't have to run out. You're welcome to hang out for a few. We're going to let our puppy dog and Lynx out. Try to maybe say hi to Lynx this time. <laughs>